Okay, um, yeah, welcome everybody. In the last video I've shown you how you can actually get data into PIVLAB by um, importing images, loading a video or doing the image acquisition directly in PIVLAB. And now, um, yeah, I would like to show how you and can actually process your data. So I will load the images that we recorded in the last video. Um, the image sequencing style is pairwise and I will select all the images except for the calibration image. I import them and I'm yeah, having a quick look how the image looks like. I can toggle between the images. Let's start with the um, selecting actually the image region that you want to analyze. You could select a region of interest but you don't have to and in this case I want to analyze the whole image. And by the way, I selected um, some PIV images here that really have a not, not optimal quality. They have a lot of background information. They have reflections, they have shadows. Um, but this was done intentionally so you can actually see that the filters have something to do, right? Okay, but I want to draw a mask. So I click draw a mask for common frame and I click around the boundary of this little nozzle here. Um, I close the polygon, then in the end I double click and then I apply the mask to all frames. Now if I skip through the frames, I can see that the mask is actually present in every frame. And I can of course also draw masks for individual frames, I can load and save masks and so on. Now what we do next is that we set some image pre-processing settings. I will first show you how it looks if you just press apply. Yeah, the image uh, contrast has been enhanced in both images. If you just enable the contrast limited adaptive histogram equalization filter, which I would always recommend to enable, it just enhances the local contrast in the images. You can also do high pass, um, which will sort of suppress low frequency information like bright areas in your image. And there are also a lot of other denoising filters, for example. Now what we actually have to do in this case, because I already told that there's a strong background signal, we can get rid of this background signal if we subtract the mean intensity of all images. So we just enable this and then apply and preview. Then I have to wait a little bit and now you can see the images how they look like without background information. So there's a lot of noise and I added quite a bit too much particles. but. It, yeah, doesn't matter at the moment. Um, okay, and you can also view the background image. So this is background image A, and this is background image B. They look different, which is the way the camera records images. What I do next is that I select some PIV settings. You can also have the, um, the tool um, suggest some settings. If you click this button, then it will count the particles and also measure the displacement and then give some recommendations based on this information. Now I would um, recommend to always use the FFT window deformation algorithm, which is the most advanced algorithm in PIVLAB. You should start with large interrogation areas to capture sort of high displacements. So um, yeah, the first interrogation area should be, let's say, four times, at least four times larger than your maximum your peak displacement in your image. And then you should in every step, let's do three steps, you can sort of half it, let's start with 128, uh, it doesn't really matter, then um, 64 and then 32 in the final pass, which will, will give a decent um, vector resolution. Then you can also select different correlation robustness settings. Um, that means, for example, the highest setting here means that it will repeat the correlation at slightly shifted areas and multiplies the resulting correlation matrices that sort of enhances the, well, correct signal or whatever PIVLAB thinks is the correct signal. Um, and this can really help you if you have, um, yeah, very bad signal to noise ratio in your image, then this setting can help you to get more valid vector um, estimates or more valid uh, es displacement estimates, but it also takes about five times longer to compute. And yeah, there's a paper also on these settings um, that is sort of uh, was sent to the journal more than a year ago and hopefully it will soon be published. It just takes a little bit of time. Okay, so these are the settings that I would recommend. You can click Analyze Current Frame just to preview your settings, how it would look like. 
And yeah, it looks okay. Resolution is fine. We have, of course, a lot of erroneous vectors here in the shadow area and also here at the top. But this is currently the aim, right? We want to have some erroneous vectors so I can show you how the filters work. Okay, um, now I'm happy with my settings and I will go to um, the Analyze menu item and I will click Analyze all frames, which will process all frames in parallel because I have the, I'm in the lucky situation that I have the parallel computing toolbox. At least I have a trial version here on this um, computer. And this means that the calculation actually speeds up quite dramatically. Okay, uh, now the analysis uh, finished and we have results for every frame can click through it here what we actually have to do now because now everything is in pixel units right the camera has of course pixel units and the time is in sort of pixel per time step but we can convert this to a real world units if we go to the calibration panel then we would load um, a calibration image for example yeah this one that we recorded then we would select a reference distance. I click here at two centimeters and again here at 10 centimeters. And I tell PipLab that this is a difference of 80 millimeters. And the time step, so the separation between the laser pulses was 0.3 milliseconds. So 300 microseconds, 0.3 milliseconds. And now I apply the calibration. And the next thing that I do is that I select what direction my coordinate system should point. So I want to have that the x-axis increases towards the right. I want to have that the y-axis increases towards the top. And then I also want that the origin of the coordinate system is at the bottom of the ruler that I see here. So I set the x offset to, let's click on this five centimeter mark and tell PIFLAB that it is 50 millimeters. Okay, that's it. Then I apply this calibration again. And uh, if I now toggle the images and if I click somewhere in the image, I can see in the lower left here the yeah, coordinates x and y in meters and also the velocities u and v in meters per second. Okay, now um, let's continue with another important uh, aspect that is the post-processing. There are two uh, validation methods now in the latest PIFLAB. There's the velocity-based valid validation that sort of takes information from the vectors and applies filters to these or you can select some rules and that it fills the vectors based on the vectors themselves. But there's also the um, so-called image-based validation um, where you can select for example that PIFLAB should ignore bright areas or it should ignore areas with low contrast, what are normally shadows. Um, so yeah, this is how I do it. I first disable all the velocity-based filters, then I go to image-based validation. And yeah, I have PIFLAB um, suggest the threshold for the low contrast filter. And it says this would be a good idea. Let's just apply it to the current frame and see. Yes, yeah, some vectors are disappearing. But I am sure if we enable another number, let's say 0.04, that yeah, more uh, invalid um, velocity information disappears. This is fine. So here on the top we have a low contrast area and also at the bottom we have a low contrast area because of um, shadows or reflections. Then um, yeah, we disable this filter again and we enable the filter for bright objects and also let PIFLAB suggest the threshold. Well, it takes a very high threshold. Let's see what it does. Um, so if I disable it again you see that there's a lot of uh, yeah wrong information here at the top where there was this bright object in the background. So yeah, let's just enable it and let's um, set a lower threshold. Let's, for example, 0.5. This will sort of get rid of all the erroneous vectors in the top and I enable the low contrast filter also, apply this. And it actually looks pretty good now. And these are only the image-based uh, validation filters. So I will go now to the more powerful velocity-based filters. The most powerful velocity-based filter is actually the most simple one, um, the velocity limits. So I can select velocity limits. I can um, 
tell PIVLAB what velocities are acceptable and what, what velocities are not acceptable. So we just draw a rectangle around this here. All the rest is just arrows. This is only the valid data. I apply it and I can again click this button again to refine the velocity limits. I can draw the rectangle a little bit closer to this. I believe these are correct velocities. Apply it again. Then I will enable a standard deviation filter with just global looking at the all velocities um, in the whole um, session and yeah, apply a standard deviation filter. And also a powerful filter is the local median filter, which will look at every single vector and at the surrounding and uh, yeah, the vectors are discarded if they differ too much from the surrounding vectors. I apply this too. It actually doesn't do much now because the image based filters um, are already very powerful. Um, okay, and now I apply this to all frames. Now the, the post-processing um, validation of the velocity filters is sort of finished. I will just quickly show you now how you can, uh, what you can do with this data. Um, for example, you can calculate the average flow and with just a single click. So this is now the average flow velocity um, of my experiment. And I can also um, plot, let's say, the velocity magnitude quickly, and then it looks like this. This is the velocity magnitude in my experiment. Um, you can plot a lot of other data. You can also extract things. You can export uh, the data to different formats. And all this is something that I will show you in the next video. So all the videos will be mentioned also down in the description of this video. I will put links there so you can watch all my videos and I hope that makes you happy. Bye bye.